Welcome back, everybody. We're here today for part two of the B100. Now, it looks a little bit different than it did the last time you guys saw it, and I'll admit I've done a little bit of work off camera. Not because I wanted to, but because I needed to figure out what parts I need to actually fix this thing. So you guys remember in the last video, we talked about some of the issues and we got it running. We know the transmission works. Everything seems to be okay mechanically wise. We just need to figure out the small issues it's got going on with it. And if you remember, I wasn't able to actually ride this tractor because of the steering problems. So what I've done, I got the front end jacked up, got it put on jack stands so I could try to figure out what exactly the issue is with this steering. So let me show you guys what I found. You guys remember in the last clip how pigeon-toed this thing was when it was sitting on the ground. Uh, this driver's side wheel was nice and straight. This one was actually bowed out, and it was fighting me trying to steer. So looking at it with the wheels off of it, see if I can do this so you guys can see it. Putting a straight edge on the spindle, you can see the angle from the spindle to that, uh, what would you call that, the tie rod end, tie rod ear. I don't know, you'd call that what? About 110 degrees, give or take. Let me show you what the other side looks like. Now over on this side, do the same thing. Put the square on the spindle and you can see how it's almost a 90 degree angle to that tie rod ear. So I think what has happened, I thought it was just a bad tie rod, which the tie rods aren't junk, but I think what's happened, they've hit something with this left front done something to, to jar it and they've actually bent the ear on this spindle and that's why it was so pigeon toed. So on top of needing at least one spindle, I needed to find some tie rods as well. And anybody that knows these tractors knows the tie rods on these are junk. They, they never last that long. They make an upgraded aftermarket set. To me, it just ain't worth spending the money on right now. I was gonna try to find a use set or build my own with uh, some 3 h tie rods. But you can see here how pitted and rusted that is. And actually, that was like that when I took it apart. So on top of needing a new spindle, I also need some tie rods. Of course, I got on eBay, started searching up part numbers, checked the old marketplace, trying to find somebody parting these out. And luckily, I'm not the only person in this state that is obsessed with wheel horses. So I reached out to a guy I met. I actually sold him a tractor last year and he's actually got a YouTube channel. I'll try to link it down below. Um, Harrison Horse Stables. He's about an hour from me and he's got an abundance of old wheel horse tractors. And the, the guy has forgotten more about these tractors than I even know. And he's just a plethora of knowledge. So I shot him a message, sure enough, uh, he was able to hook me up. He got me a complete front axle out of one, complete with tie rods and spindles. Now, the only difference I've really seen so far, if you look at this axle here, this style spindle is set up to have a, a, a bolt to actually retain the wheel to the spindle, whereas this style used an E-clip. But got the old trusty Harbor Freight tape measure out and to the end there is about what, three and seven eighths. And the old spindle, if you go to the mounting face before the E-clip, it's about three and seven eighths. So we're good there. Um, the tie rods, those are the same length as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these, I'm gonna swap both spindles, both tie rods, get it all set up, and then we'll see, we'll see what we're looking at and if we're pigeon-toed still or not. So after looking at this, it looks like these are just held in with some snap rings. Got me some trusty snap ring pliers here. Let's see if we can't get this off. There's that. Now, if I understand right, back you guys up a little bit, this should just slide out. Oh yeah. There's one, let's get the other side. Come 
and there's number two. All right, guys, I've already got the other side on. Let's throw this side on. Oh, yeah, nice and easy. Now, a couple of you guys have probably already noticed that I screwed up here, kind of. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, when I was checking these out for compatibility, I did notice I missed what actually retains the spindle to the axle. The old setup, this is the old set here, you snap rings, push it into the axle. You guys watch me take it off. The snap ring holds it in place. But on the new ones, let me show you. The new ones on that different axle are held in with E-clips. Not a big deal. As you can see, it still went on fine. Everything still works fine. Where I messed up was, um, I forgot that this stuff is probably 30 years old and I went to take the first E-clip off this side and shot it across the room and it broke in half. So for now, I've got the snap ring just sitting on there to hold it in place. The, the groove in the spindle isn't big enough for the snap ring to fit. So I'm gonna have to either machine that out or just find a new E-clip to put on it. But for now, for the sake of the video, it's gonna stay like that and uh, we'll get the tie rods put on now and see what it looks like. All right, guys, get the tie rod here. I don't remember exactly if it, you guys can't really see back in here too far. If it went like, I think it went like this. I think it goes in from the front. I'm not gonna get crazy and torque all these down yet because I'm probably gonna end up cleaning these up and painting them while I got them all apart. Hopefully make them last a little bit longer. All right, there's that side. Let me do the other side real quick. All right, side number two. Rinse and repeat here. Oh, I forgot, you gotta... There we go. Trying to keep my hands out of the way. That one on there. All right, there we go. Well, that looks more gooder. You guys, I went in and threw these tires back on so you can kind of see it helps give you a line of sight to see what I was talking about. But see how this spindle has got a, what'd you call that, a positive angle? And this one over here, that has it as well. Now, like I said, I didn't tighten all these tie rods up yet. Um, I actually want to go through and, you know me, I'm going to sandblast them and repaint them before I throw it back together. And these tires, um, I got to do something about them too. Probably gonna put some tubes in them for now. And uh, yeah. But yeah, there we go guys. This thing is technically able to ride now. Let's move on down the list.
guys. You saw me get these spindles cleaned up. Turned out pretty good. And uh, I've had a few cold snacks by this point. My creative juices are flowing. So instead of trying to source out and locate a new E-clip to replace the ones that I broke, I'm thinking if I take a cutoff wheel, I can just very easily come in here and grind this out, open this gap up a little bit so a snap ring will fit in there and hold it. So that's what we're gonna try. All right, you guys can kind of see what we're messing with here. There's the snap ring and that's the gap I've got. So I don't think it's gonna take much. We just clean that out a little bit. I think we can get her opened up to where the snap ring is gonna work in there. Let's see what we got there. Well, I think that's pretty good, guys. I got the good parts taped off, stuff I don't want paint on. Uh, for you guys who's been wondering, I'm using Rust-Oleum Sunrise Red as a color. It's not a perfect match to the Wheel Horse Red, but it does a pretty good job. And it's in a spray can, so let's get some paint tossed on these. Well, you guys have already seen me do this once, so if uh, you don't mind, I probably won't do no commentating. Get the tie rods all sandblasted and painted up. Let's get them thrown on too. Well, it never fails. You got to use the grease gun out of grease. Oh, yeah. Made a hell of a mess. Perfect. Let's see, we got the steering dialed in. 
Well, moving on from steering, we got to do something about these front tires. Now, it seems like just yesterday you guys were watching me struggle trying to do wheels and tires. So, here we are again. These wheels are pretty rough looking. The tires are just as awful. One of these, I'm pretty sure, has got water in it. But as you guys can tell, there's no tubes in them. So, for the sake of being on budget, and because I haven't quite decided what I want to do yet, I am for sure going to go ahead and break these down, get these wheels cleaned up, get them painted, make them look a little bit better, try to preserve them, unless they're just god-awful on the inside. But for now, I'm going to paint them and clean them. I got some tubes on order, and uh, yeah, so... I guess sit back and watch me struggle yet again as I try to do some tires. There it is. Well, after spending way too much time trying to clean these, I got them halfway decent. Paint wasn't really the problem. It was stuck on rubber, and but now that I got these clean, you guys can really see. I took a wire brush in there too, trying to get the chunks of rubber off of it. You can really see how pitted this is. So, I mean, even if, even if I wasn't gonna run a tube, I don't know if this wheel would even seal up again, but yeah, I wanna show you guys. I'll throw some paint on it, you won't be able to see it no more. So let's get them painted. So this is the part of the video where I'm probably gonna annoy some of you guys because I'm pretty sure on these years of tractors in the 70s and leading up to that, I'm pretty sure they painted the wheels like a, an off-white color, almost like a cream color. Well, I don't have that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the same thing I used last time flat white primer and I'm gonna follow it up with some of this bright coat metallic finish and yeah so
All right, guys, got the wheels painted up. Y'all know the drill by now. We're gonna reuse these crappy old tires and we're gonna throw some new tubes in. So sit back and watch me struggle for the next 20 minutes while I get these mounted. Well, you guys know what's funner than putting tubes in tires, having to do it twice. Yeah, I must have nicked this whenever I was installing it. So anyway, luckily I ordered four tubes instead of just two. Can you believe I actually planned ahead and ordered some new wheel bearings in? These are uh, some Amazon specials. If I can figure out how to put the link in the, the description, I will, but they were like 10 bucks off Amazon. I don't know, we'll see how long they last. But let's get these bearings put in and get these wheels put back on the tractor and we can move on to something else. All right, guys, let's check the list so far. So we know we took care of the steering issue, so we can take care of that. Flat tires, take care of that. The brake pedal, I ended up lubing that up off camera. Everything's fine on that, it's not sticking. So we'll take that off. So we're down to needing a battery, the fuel tank, and actually the air filter. I guess I can cross that off, because you know, I found a used one. Let's focus on this one for now. And I actually want to start with the rear end fluid on this. Um, someone in the last video actually commented about it and he's not wrong. This thing sat outside for God knows how long and it probably has water in this rear end. So we're gonna pull that out and check it real quick and see what we got. Now normally on these, when you lift the seat up, the dipstick's closer to the top, but you look down in there there's your dipstick for the rear end fluid. But I don't know what's going on with that one. That one, you gotta come down here to get it out. Let's see if I can get it. Ooh, that was not on there very tight. I'm trying to get the focus for you guys. Come on. A lot of rust on the dipstick and not much oil showing. So let's go ahead and get this drained out. Hopefully nothing's tore up in there, but we'll go ahead and drain it and uh, get some fresh fluid put in it. Well, let's hope it comes out. Oh yeah. Hopefully you guys can see this. Kind of tight down here, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, a lot of water in that. 
That's some good stuff there. Look at all that goo. Let that finish drain, <clears throat> draining. We'll check the pan and hopefully there's no big chunks in there. You guys be sure to tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure what you want when you go to fill this back up, you want it just running out of this, this vent hole here. So we'll go ahead and take this out. So when we're filling it back up, we know how much we got. All right, guys, these eight speed rear ends, they call for some 80W90 weight gear oil. So let's get this put in there. All right, guys, owner's manual actually said that holds about two quarts. So went ahead and topped that off the rest of the way and we're sitting right where we should be. Well, we got the transaxle fluid change. I'd like to do the engine oil next, but before I do, I'd kind of like to run that engine for, you know, five, 10 minutes, get some heat build up and hopefully get all the, the, the bad stuff picked up in the oil before I drain it. And uh, when it's hot, it's gonna drain out a lot easier. Well, in order to do that, I need to get a fuel tank put in here. And like I told you guys, uh, I managed to source out a good use tank. I need to get that put in there. But before I do that, I want to go through and clean up all this crusty, nasty stuff in here. So that's what we're going to do first. You got to do three things to get one thing accomplished. You know, the way it goes. a lot better. Let's get this tank put in now. Now yeah, maybe. Got the fuel line coming from the end or from the tank. This is the line going to the pump on the engine. Got an inline filter here. I uh, these aren't the best quality, these are some Amazon specials, but I like them because they're see through, so you can make sure you're actually getting some fuel flow. So let's get these put on.
All right, make sure you guys don't like or uh, laugh at me. I'm gonna use some zip ties as fuel line clamps. I know, I know, it's not the right thing to do, but if you're using the right size fuel line with the right size uh, filters, they actually work pretty good. Flush cats, Harbor Freight. These things are fantastic. You guys remember a minute ago when I said you gotta do like four things to get one thing done? So in order for me to change the oil, I wanted to get the engine hot, which means I needed to put the fuel tank on it, which means I needed to put the new fuel line on it with the fuel filter. Well, it also means I need to go ahead and put the battery in it because there is no point in me using the jump box whenever I got a battery to put in it. So, now we're gonna get the battery put in, which means I need to clean up this battery tray. So, let's do it. Now, from what I understand, this U1 battery should slide right in here, kind of. Oh yeah, look at that. Boy, if that ain't a perfect fit. All right, guys, I just couldn't stand putting these battery hold downs back in all rusty, so I had to hit them with the sandblaster and throw a coat of paint on them real quick, so. Now that that's out of the way, let's see if we can't get these on here. Without cussing too much. You'll be able to see this side a lot better, I promise. She's got these L brackets that come up through the battery tray. Put that on there washer, new quarter by 20 nut. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I'd say that's secure. All right, this time around, I'm gonna use some of this two-stroke mix. I'm sure everybody's watched old Vice Grip Garage videos and you know, he swears by this stuff. It's got a little, some, it's got some oil in it. I know we've already started this thing, but it's not gonna hurt to run it on some pre-mix for a while till those rings set in again. Start with that for now and make sure we don't have no leaks. I know we're just changing the oil, but 
this is technically going to be its first startup under its own power with the right fuel system. So let's uh, turn on the old key switch and, and uh, see if it runs. Well, I'd say it's getting hot now, guys. See if we can't get this oil drained out of it. I wouldn't say getting hot, but it's definitely got some heat in it. Let's see if it'll actually go in the drain pan or if it goes everywhere else. Oh, yeah. Now, you guys watched me in the last video. I put, like... I don't know, at least two quarts uh, fresh oil in that. You guys can see how black that is coming out of there. We'll let that drain off and we'll get some fresh oil put back in it. All right, guys, got the old oil drained out. Got the drain plug put back on. Let's go ahead and fill this back up where it should be. Takes about two quarts. Well guys, there you go. Got the front end put back together, got the new bearings put in, got tubes in the tires. I will say that I did have to pull the carb off for a second time. That float was sticking. I don't know if it got some junk in there or what was going on with the needle and seat, but hopefully it stays together. But there's one more thing I gotta do before we take it for its maiden voyage. Now you purists out there might wanna look, look away, but you see we're missing the throttle knob. I've got some brand new ones off later model. Put that on there. Oh, look at that. Technically, we could call this a resto mod now. There we go guys, maiden voyage wasn't very long, if you haven't noticed it's kind of snowing out, but I don't know, I think it turned out pretty good, all the gears seem to be working on it, front tires are holding air, uh, so now what do we do with it, you know, I know we had kind of talked about maybe doing the restoration on it, repainting it, I've been trying to keep up with the comments, I'm overwhelmed with how many people are actually watching me do this crap, but a lot of the comments said just 
you know, get it where it's running, it's reliable, and, and use it. So that's what I think we're going to do. I kind of went on the cheap side. You know, I went with tubes instead of new tires, and I don't know. Like I said, I got a deck I can throw on it. Of course, we're nowhere near needing to mow. I've been keeping an eye out for another plow, something I can throw on it, just get some use out of it. So, but um, if anybody's interested in buying it, shoot me a message. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I wouldn't... It might be worth 200 bucks. I don't know, but somebody wants it, get a hold of me. We try to work a deal out, but, uh, but yeah, guys, like I said, keep on watching, keep commenting. I'm trying to keep up. You guys are, like I said, I'm just amazed at how many people is actually watching me do this crap and you guys seem to seem to enjoy it. So, but uh, yeah, this has been a long one. I'm going to quit rambling now and, and uh, move on to the next thing. So you guys have a good one.